Let's face it, at times life can be a struggle. Between trying to pay bills, personal issues, and worldwide problems, it can zap a lot out of our happiness and energy. Wouldn't it be nice to have a little help? No, I'm, I'm not talking about the bottle of liquor you hide under the sofa, but how about something like a lovable robot helper? Well, that is the premise for today's charming little game called Chibi Robo Plug Into Adventure. Chibi Robo is a lesser known Nintendo property that unfortunately does not get enough love in my opinion, especially in terms of the original game that released exclusively on the GameCube. You play as the titular miniature robot as he is introduced to the Sandersons, a family struggling with a multitude of issues such as a toy-obsessed unemployed father, a socially withdrawn daughter who dresses and acts like a frog, and a distressed mother trying to keep it all together. You, along with millions of other Chibi Robos in the world, have been created to serve families all over by doing good deeds for them. Along your path of goodwill, you will be assisted by a miniature television, aptly named Television, who speaks for you and helps give you slightly annoying advice along the journey. You'll be released to explore the Sanderson home at your leisure where you perform tasks such as picking up trash, cleaning up dirt with your little toothbrush, or helping the family with a range of other activities. When the Sandersons aren't around, toys and other interesting characters come to life to offer up side quests as well as some great humor along the way. The game is split into day and nighttime cycles that only give you a limited amount of time in each cycle before it changes to the next. And it's important to note that certain characters, events, and rooms will only be accessible during certain parts of the day. As you continue to explore the environment and perform actions, your battery will continuously drain, making it to where you have to keep an eye out for wall outlets to keep you charged up. As you perform your good deeds, you will earn happy points, which will allow you to move up in the rankings against the other Chibi Robos of the world, and in turn, reward you with upgraded batteries to keep you going longer. You will also earn and discover Moolah, which is the game's currency. That will allow you to buy upgrades and items to help you on your journey. You can also earn special costumes that change up your little Chibo, and while they don't offer up any special abilities per se, they do offer up some fun conversations when approaching different characters. While the game is mostly focused on peaceful actions of cleaning and fetch quests, you will also have to worry about blasting the unsavory critters named Spy Doors, as they attempt to hinder you in the quest for goodness. Luckily, the scrap they leave behind allows you to create utilibots, which create objects such as ladders, bridges, and teleporters to help you explore places you were once unable to. Now you may be watching this video and going, why would I want to go around and just clean things? That's boring. But honestly, you'd be surprised. You'll end up doing a lot of repetitive tasks to earn moolah and happy points, but it was relaxing and enjoyable to run around this relatively large house and do various odds and ends. Unlike other platformers where the challenge lies in jumping puzzles and defeating enemies, the game's challenge comes by monitoring your energy levels and the time left in the day to complete whatever task you have set for yourself. Chibi Robo adopts a very hands-off approach to how you progress through the game. There are rarely any moments where the game tries to force you in any certain direction. The quests aren't tracked by any sort of menu screen and there aren't any sort of visual indicators on where you should go next to complete a quest. The game ultimately wants you to take your time, explore all the nooks and crannies in the environments, and discover things on your own accord. Now, I can see where this may be frustrating to certain players, especially if you're someone like me who loads up a save data and then goes, now wait, what was I doing? But what it does is it creates a gameplay experience that feels pretty rewarding as you explore. As your battery life gets better and better, the ability to explore more parts of the house offers a great sense of progression. 
looking up at a shelf that's far in the distance and then asking yourself, how do I make it up there? And then going through the trial and error of succeeding makes the game so worthwhile. The characters and their stories, while definitely on the side of wacky, end up being really funny and worthwhile to try to seek out. Take for example the Free Rangers, a group of eggs dressed in military garb, training night and day to prepare for war against the family's dog. Or another quest that has Mort, a toy mummy who attempts to show affection for the princess he loves, only to have her continuously faint at the sight of him. These moments really add something to the game and offer up tons of extra side quests to keep you having fun for hours. The Sanderson story of family dysfunction, while mostly humorous in its presentation, comes with some pretty surprising themes you wouldn't come to expect from this type of game. While it never gets dark by any means, it does touch on things like divorce, loneliness, and loss. I never felt like these plot points overtook the joy of the game, only accentuated it and gave it more of an impact, which not a lot of games like of this type can do very well. Coming to the visuals, uh, upon the release the graphics were not well received, mostly because it was nearing the end of the GameCube era, uh, but I think ultimately it held up tremendously well. As you can tell, the visuals are bright and colorful, giving off a wonderful 1960s deco vibe. Each room has its own distinct color palette of blues, pinks, and yellows, and it makes a lot of the environment pretty memorable. Sound and music play major parts in the game's overall aesthetic, with every action that you do creating some kind of randomized tune. From different instrument sounds that alter based on the surfaces you step on, to having the background music increase its tempo when your character picks up speed, the game offers us a band and allows you to be a composer of sorts. The voices of the characters are an odd collection of sounds that range from slightly annoying to downright comedic. Each one seems to have a perfect fit for their design, and it just adds to the weird, offbeat personality of the characters. The music of the game is downright funky, if you pardon my language, with a wonderful mix of jazz and funk that keep you jamming through and through. While I love the soundtrack to the game, it does lack variety and it starts to become apparent a couple hours in, and by the end of the game, the normal day's music starts to wear out. Chibi Robo's main storyline will last you around 10 hours, but there's still so much to do. With side quests, collectibles, and tons of nooks and crannies to try to explore, there's plenty of things to keep you coming back. Even after I finish this review, I still intend on going back and finishing up a few things I was unable to do before this video. With the biggest technical issues revolving around a somewhat unruly camera and some slight control problems here and there, the biggest determining factor in whether if Chibi Robo is a game for you will depend on how receptive you are to its style of gameplay. And while it won't be for everyone, I believe Chibi Robo is a quintessential hidden gem. It is so unique and is just gushing at the brim with charm and enjoyment. It's cheerful and weird and it's something that I want everybody to experience. At the end of the day, Chibo's goal to spread happiness to people extends all the way to the player. But unfortunately, with all great news must come sad news. If you're looking to play Chibi Robo, then you may have to drop a pretty penny. It is a pretty rare game, and with the GameCube collectors on the rise, trying to find a copy under $100 is going to be a difficult task. And while Nintendo has released games in the series, there hasn't been any rumors of a re-release yet. But Nintendo, if you're listening, please give us a remaster on the Switch. This is a game that needs to have a better audience, and uh, oh, who am I kidding? If they were listening, I would already be shut Thank you for watching Rust Promoter, and hopefully I was able to earn some happy points with you today. Please continue to follow me on my journey as I find all the wonderful games that have been forgotten by time. 
Take care and keep retro.